ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to talk about things that might happen in 2050. First of all, life in 2050 will be different. Reading paper books might seem like a novelty. Popcorn could be a snack of the past. We could even take interstellar flights to Mars as if it were just another continent. Traveling to the center of the Earth may no longer be a dream. Much intervention to ingenuity came to benefit the quality of our lives. In spite of all that, life and death, health and fitness may still be our constant concerns. Will human beings be certain to remain as a species? Maybe life will tell either towards living in heaven or living in hell. We have no control over when our life arrives at its end. But what if we could reach beyond human morality? Have you ever imagined that humans could someday become immortal? I mean, every one of us, an immortal deity. In order to tap into the idea of immortality, first of all, we need to define what immortality is. There are mainly two types of definition. Number one, no physical death of the body. This definition doesn't mean much if we don't first define the meaning of immortality or the meaning of death. We can simply think of it as the body organisms working properly and keeping their vitality to the end of time. This is thus far unfathomable since the cells in our body haven't shown any sign that they can function forever by design. They are like components in a computer. They can function according to the design for some time, but over time, wear and tear will cause them to cease from working, which is one way to define death. Death seems to be imminent, but who knows? We are imagining the era 2050, after all. Nothing is impossible. There could be types of medicine that can prolong cellular vitality and longevity. Scientists project that in the next 30 years, human life lifespan can be extended for an extra 20 or 30 years, meaning that we will have some 30 extra years for research and development making extending mortality more probable. If this cycle continues, immortality is theoretically achievable. Another type of definition of immortality is achieving immortality through finessing. The prerequisite of this definition is to define death in a new way. Here the term death is not the breakdown of a body. It is the disorientation of the soul. While this might seem a little complicated, let's first go to, go to the story. In Greek mythology, the dead man's soul goes to the underworld, the land of the dead. There they are divided into the good and the evil. The good goes to the Elysian, while the evil are sent to the fields of punishment, where they suffer eternally. If the soul ever wants to be alive again, it will have to come out of the underworld through the door of death, which is quite impossible to open, you know, guarded by monsters, and in some version, it's to head it off. Well, although this is just a tiny version, a tiny portion of the Greek mythology, I think it tells what the soul means quite well. But there is a tiny difference. Since we don't have the underworld below us or any souls floating in the air, the soul I'm referring to here is quite the same as the mind. We can simply think of it as our personalities and soul patterns. By 2050, it is highly possible that we can distinguish and dissect our personality from our body. In other words, transplanting one brain, one thoughts and personalities into another body could be the continuation of living through another physical form. What if we could transplant our brain into a robot, having all the advantages of a mechanical body? Strictly speaking, this is not immortality, since the brain as an organ still ages. But what if we could harvest our personality and transfer it into an artificial brain, by like injecting a shot? The artificial brain encrypted by real human personality and thoughts 
in the mechanical body, making the new configuration almost invisible and immortal. However, one of the funny things, immortality, like everything, has its pitfalls too. When cellular vitality and longevity were possible, organs no longer age, meaning that everyone would look about the same in appearance. Age would be irrelevant. You could be looking at a person 100 years older than you and think that you have the same age as that person. Also, this would result in a terrible outcome in the order of human reproduction, as a male, uh, as a female, have children with a male who is the age of, of, of her grand, great grandfathers, or a male marrying females with, or males marrying females who are the age of their grannies. Nobody wants that to happen. Also, overpopulation will result in a terrible outcome. Also, overpopulation will bring great stress to agriculture and clean water, and energy supply shortage. Moreover, not everyone wants to live forever. Some people might feel exhausted after a few hundred years. They might just want to rest in peace. How could they do that ethically? They can't just kill themselves, can they? Well, transplanting thoughts and personalities into machines isn't as good as it sounds either. When our consciousness could be living and functioning in a machine, how would that alter the definition of human beings? Would we be another type of rob robotic beings? What if the consciousness in the machines became the machine's own consciousness, something the humans could no longer control? Would the machines turn against the humans? If so, would it be an era in which humans might face real terminators who are guided by their own decisions? Will the machines capture humans and reproduce, creating demi-robots? In the end, will humans be entirely annihilated, leaving only machines in, in the world? Or will they become machines? Or humans in a more advanced form? I don't know. It's the future, right? Who knows? Everything lies in our past, waiting there on the horizon waiting for us to discover. There are thousands of ideas, opportunities, and possibilities. Imagine them, look for them, test them out, go for it. May the odds be ever in your favor. Thank you.